As promised, joining us now, the Lieutenant Governor from Virginia, Winsome Earl Sears. Your Honor, it's great to have you. We appreciate the time. Let's go to the Governor's tweet here and what he said about loving your neighbor. Withholding money doesn't sound like loving your neighbor. I hope, can you hear us now, Your Honor? Yes, I can hear you now. I'm there you sorry. Go. All uh, right, so go ahead. With, with all due respect to the governor's tweet about loving your neighbor, withholding money from districts doesn't sound like loving your neighbor. Well, what I said at the time is that it's possible. I don't know that he can do that. Uh, I, you know, he's got a lot of different resources and, uh, you know, uh, that he can use. I don't know that he can do that. And in fact, as you know, uh, parents, some parents have filed a lawsuit uh, to see what they can do to continue the mask mandates. But look, what the governor is trying to do is to ensure that the parents make a decision on how their child will be educated. It is really as simple as that. What a concept that parents should be given that choice. During the campaign, the governor said whether to require masks in schools would be left to localities to decide. So at this point, what's changed? Well, he has always said that the parents ought to be able to make that decision. And the parents have elected him to be the governor. And so he's really simply fulfilling what he has said that he would do. He did not hide what he wanted to do. And the people decided that this is the governor that they wanted to choose. They have made their choice. And so he is simply allowing the parents to make that decision. Well, really, it is that simple. What if the local district and its parents want a mask mandate? I mean, shouldn't that be their option too? Well, the, the parents will, as, as you know, that there are some uh, parents who are actually trying to do recalls on some of the school board members that they have uh, voted for, because now that they know the situation, they are trying every possible means that they can to ensure that the choice about how their children will be educated remains with them and not with a government entity. Your opponents are calling you authoritarians, uh, Lieutenant Governor, and, and I guess I'm curious, I, clearly your comment about the money got a lot of headlines. Are you mm -hmm. walking that back or do you want to wait until there's a verdict as the governor has suggested, let the legal process play mm -hmm. out before you make a decision on that? Yeah, it's gonna take some time for the legal process to play out. And I tell you, uh, the bill is probably going to expire if I'm not mistaken, either August or July. And it might take that long for the state Supreme Court here in Virginia to make a decision. Mm. In the meantime, what the governor is saying is, listen to the, your principals, listen to your school board, and uh, follow their directive. This is nothing about authoritarianism. If it were, he would say, my way, my way, no other way, absolutely. But God forbid, imagine, God forbid that parents should be able to make the decision about how their children should be schooled. Imagine that. What a concept. <laughs> well, the problem with this is, Your Honor, that there's no way you're going to get everyone and every parent in a district to agree one, one way or the other. We've seen what's happened with this. So how do you come down on, let's say the courts say this is okay, you can have a mask mandate, then what? Well, then we were going to have a mask mandate. I mean, the courts would have made a decision. And until we can change the laws, it will be what it will be. The, we are a country of rules, we are a country of laws, and we, re, we respect and appreciate the laws. The governor made an executive uh, order, and the, the parents have, some parents have sued. We're waiting for that decision to come down. In the meantime, what he has said in no uncertain terms is, follow the directive of your local school board. If they're going to keep masks in place, then follow that. If they have decided to remove the masks, then follow that. You know, here's the real meat of it. The private schools have figured this out a long time ago. Private schools have been open five days a week here in Virginia for about two years now when the public schools were not. And so if they can figure it out, then surely public schools can. You know, I was just in a public school this morning and it is one of the lower performing schools. And I tell you, the children were already two years behind grade level. And now that uh, we went to, we had COVID restrictions, 
They're a further two years behind. These children are four years behind. How are we going to get mm. that back? Is it possible? Not, we, by, staying, not well, by staying out of school and not by locking school down. And that's why this law came into being. Uh, it's Senate Bill 1303. And the patron is the medical doctor in our Senate. And they figure it out. Well, let's get something in place so the schools can reopen because the children are suffering. Right. And she has already stated it was never a mask mandate. It was to follow the CDC recommendations. Right. Now, the CDC did not mandate masks. It recommended the mask. We'll see where it goes on that. Your Honor, one other question for you. The governor set up a hotline for parents to report schools for teaching critical race theory. I I'm curious, is there a rash of secret CRT teaching going on that, that we don't know about? Why the need for a hotline? So I, I hear the, the, the sarcasm in your voice, and it's <laughs> unfortunate because it is being taught here. If you would look at the information, uh, you could find that the Washington Post itself, itself found out that, in fact, $314,000-some dollars was paid to a CRT-type uh, um, contractor in order to find out how uh, we should teach it. It's not Furthermore, being taught in K-12, though, right, Your Honor? In 2015, in 2015 uh, then the, school, the school board, the state, uh, Board of Education uh, provided guidelines on how to teach it. And uh, some other monies have been spent on that. So, you know, we're using semantics, but the real meat of this thing is we're going to teach history. We're going to teach slavery. We're going to teach about redlining, which really, to me, not having a choice about where to send your children to school is the new red line because you are bounded by mm. that zip code. And God help you if your children are not learning. That's the only school you will have for your children. We are saying that we're going to teach all of history, everything that needs to be taught. We're not going to sugarcoat anything. And by the way, I don't want anything sugarcoated because you know what we know about history, that we don't learn from history. So we got to teach it. Right. You've been but, but while we're doing that, let us teach, let us teach children how to be overcomers. How to, how to see the glasses half full. Mm -hmm. This morning, again, I was in a school where the children kind of felt like there was no hope. And how dare we pile on that instead of saying, you can succeed, you will succeed, we are going to help you do that. That's what we want. Yeah. Give the children a hope and a future so that they can create generational wealth. Half full sounds great, Your Honor, because they have been through an awful lot in the last couple of years. And we should point yes, out, too, have. your history with the Board of Education as well gives you a good and strong voice. And we appreciate you joining us tonight. Lieutenant Governor of Virginia Winsome Earl Sears, thanks for the time. Thank you, and God bless America. All right. Take care. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.